Ask and you shall receive. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial video on how to draw dream catches. Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karen, and as promised, today we're going to be having a look at how to draw dream catches for your journal. As part of today's video, we're going to have a look at the equipment that I use and other pieces of equipment that might be useful. I'm going to show you how to draw this dream catcher in particular, and then also talk about some of the variations you can do to make it your own. Before we jump into it, just a reminder that any of the equipment I use in today's setup is linked in the description box below. But let's get into it. The first piece of equipment that I would recommend for drawing dream catchers would be some kind of a circle stencil. For the dream catchers that I drew as part of my monthly setup and also the one I'm drawing today, I'm mainly going to be using my Helix Circle Maker. This one's really useful because you can really easily draw a bunch of concentric circles using these little dots along the side here. What you essentially do with this is you just shove your pencil in one of the holes, spin it the whole way around, then into the next hole, spin it the whole way around, then into the next hole, spin it the whole way around. This one can be really useful because you can do all of your concentric circles at once, you don't have to move your stencil around or anything like that. But you can technically get the same effect just using a regular circle stencil like this one that I have from Statler. In terms of my journaling escapades in general, I do find this one super super useful. Whereas my Helix, I've really only used for dream catchers and circular mood trackers, so something that you'd probably want to consider before you go out and buy one. The next piece of equipment that I'd recommend would be a protractor, and although this one technically isn't a protractor, it is a matho mat. It does have a protractor here in the middle, and that's really helpful for making sure you're dividing sections of your circle up in your dream catcher nice and evenly. Of course, we'll also need something to draw on and something to draw with. In terms of drawing on, today I mainly used my Archer and Olive, but I did also use an LT1917. In terms of drawing with, I used the Tombow Jewel Brush markers in this range of colours here, again linked in the description box below. I used my Pit Artist pens in both the M and S size. I of course needed to go in with a pencil first, so I have a pencil and an eraser. And then a couple of other tools include a ruler and this little acrylic block, but strictly speaking you don't necessarily need this and I'll talk more about it when I actually get to using it. To start off with, on this page I'm just going to mark out where I want the centre of my dream catcher to be. Because I know I want it to be in the middle of the page, I know I'm going to have to divide this in half, so in the Archer and Olive that's 13 squares across. And in terms of the actual size of my dream catcher, that's going to be about 10 centimeters in diameter, so I'm going to need to go 5 centimeters from the top. Now, as I mentioned, for my one, I am going to be using my Helix Circle Maker, but you could technically use any circle stencil and just make sure you line it up nice and carefully with that dot that you've given yourself. On the Helix, it's quite nice because they have this central mark here, which I can just line up with my dot to make sure it's all centralized. And I'm going to draw in my circle. There we go. So that's going to be the outer edge of my dream catcher. To draw the dream catchers that I had as part of my monthly setup, I then went in and drew a bunch more concentric circles. This isn't strictly necessary, and I will show you later on how to do this without having so many concentric circles, but I do find using the helix and using a bunch of concentric circles one of the easier ways to do this. On the helix, the radius of each concentric circle differs by a quarter of an inch. This gives me really nice even circles to work with, which made my dream catcher look tidy. One of the things to note about the helix is as you get closer towards the center, the circle is actually kind of harder to draw. You might need to use a finger or your other hand to kind of push your pencil through. If you didn't have a helix circle maker, you can use something like this Stetler circle stencil instead which has a bunch of different size circles, and I'm going to use these to fill in the rest of this. It's good also to mention here that it doesn't matter if your concentric circles are or aren't the same size. As you can see, the ones that I did with my helix do all have an even gap, but the ones I've done in the middle here don't, and that's going to be fine. The next thing that I'm going to do is draw on some intersecting lines. So those are lines that will run from one side of the circle straight through the middle and through to the other. 
You could use a ruler in this part, I'm just going to freehand it because with the dots of my journal it's pretty easy to line these up. I personally find it easiest to at first have these four intersecting lines to make eight segments. And then depending on the pattern you're going for, dividing those up into maybe two or three. I haven't tried one with four and I think it might get a little bit too tight and a little bit messy. For this one though, I'm going to divide each of these eight segments up into three equal pieces. If you really wanted to have equal pieces, it would be good to use a protractor at this stage. So you could take the full 360 degrees of the circle and divide that by how many segments you wanted. So for instance, for the eight segments that I have here, each of those would go through a 45 degree angle. Then if I wanted to divide each of those in half, each of those segments would go through a 22.5 degree angle. For me, because I'm dividing each of these segments up into three segments themselves, that means that each of those is going to be 15 degrees. For me, my protractor is this mathemat, so you can see it has each of the angles laid out here, so I could use that to give myself some guidelines, or guide dots, so that then I can put my guidelines in. So now I just need to go and connect those dots to the center of my circle. Just to recap what we've done so far, we put a dot to centralize our circle drew a bunch of concentric circles, and then divided those up with these lines. Now it's time to start thinking about where we're going to put our pattern. To do this I'm going to keep using my pencil, just in case I want to make any changes, and it's a lot easier to change pencil than it is to change pen. The first thing I'm going to do is put a dot at this left hand intersection here. So this isn't the intersection for the outermost circle, because remember the outermost circle is the very outside of our drink catcher. And we're going to be using the space between that outermost circle and the second outermost circle to make the ring that goes around the outside. So my dot here is on that second outermost circle. After this I'm going to work my way around that circle and I'm going to put a dot at every second intersection. So dot here, not there, dot here, not there, dot here, not there, dot here, so on and so forth. These dots represent where I'm actually going to be starting my lines. On the next ring closest to the center we're going to do the same again, but we're going to do it on the other intersecting lines. So instead of this one here, it's going to be this one here. And again, just every second intersection, so yes, no, yes, no, yes, and so on and so forth. Now at this stage I could just continue doing that alternation for every single concentric circle towards the middle. But to add a little bit of visual interest and so that all of my line segments and openings aren't all the same size, I'm going to miss one of my circles and go to the next one. So instead of drawing my dots on the next ring over, I'm going to go to the one after that. And again doing that alternating pattern, so yes, no, yes. No, yes, etc. And maybe for the next one, instead of missing just one circle, I'll miss two. So there are dots on this one, no dots on that one, no dots on that one, but yes, dots on this one. As I mentioned before, it doesn't matter if your concentric circles are or aren't the same sizes. As you can see here, even though my first concentric circles, the ones that I did with my helix, were all really consistent, there were some of them I just didn't even use. So it doesn't matter if the gaps between your circles are the same or if they're different. Once you have all your dots in, it's really just a matter of joining them all up. 
So each of my outermost dots should join to the two closest to it with a straight line. Again, I'm still using pencil at this stage, just so that I can make sure my pattern looks the way I want it to. For my second ring of dots, as well as being joined to the outer ring, they should be joined to the next one, again using straight lines. And for the next ring, the same again, joining those in with those straight lines. As you start to get closer to the center, do make sure you are joining the correct dots together. A good way to think about it is that you're essentially trying to find the middle point between two consecutive dots. So these two dots are on the same ring together, and this is the middle point that we're going to. Once you get to the innermost ring of dots, you just need to join all of those with straight lines as well. If at this stage you're happy with your pattern, it's time to commit with pen. What I find the easiest thing to do is, is to go in again and draw in each of those intersections and then just join them all up with those straight lines. You can also choose at this stage to add in some more decoration, so while I'll be keeping all of those intersections as just dots, you could do something similar to my Moo Tracker and draw them as bigger circles that you can colour in later. Or on any of our straight lines, you can add in circles to represent beads on your dreamcatcher, things like that. For today though, I'm just going to be leaving mine as straight lines with dark black dots. For this inner ring of dots, I've just left them in pencil for now because they're a little bit messy and I want to deal with them at the end. When going in with your pen, one thing to be mindful of is all of the lines that you have on this that are not the ones you want to pen in. In particular, any of the lines that make up our concentric rings, or any of the lines that go directly from the outside to the inside of the circle. Now as we have the internal pattern of our Dreamcatcher done, it's time to draw the ring around the outside. To start off with, I'm going to draw in the tie-off points. So this is for those outermost dots. For my tie-offs, I like to draw just three little kind of tear shape patterns. They kind of look like tiny daisy petals. So we have one that comes straight out and then one either side of that. And then once you're happy with them, you just commit to the pen. Now it's time to make it look like that outer ring is wrapped with some kind of fabric. There are a couple of ways you can do this. On my first Dreamcatcher, what I did was I just penned in both of those rings and then separated each of them with tiny squares. So by this I mean, if that was the outside of my ring, which was drawn in pen. I just went in and drew a box over it like this, so that it kind of looked like it was wrapped. Although this works just fine, I found that it wasn't necessarily the cleanest way to get the effect that I was looking for. What I did for my mood tracker and the dream catcher that I had on my weekly spread was instead of drawing out both of those rings in pen, I left them in pencil and then drew my line work over the top, so essentially drawing each segment in individually. Instead of making these just little rounded squares, I tried to make it look a little bit more realistic by using a more organic shape. So for this one, I started on the inner edge, drew a slight curve out and over. And then where that intersected the inner circle, I drew another slight curve out, curved it around, and over. So showing you what I mean on my actual dream catcher. <laughs> and going in with pen, if I start here, I curve slightly inwards and then over. And then do the same again, slightly inwards and over. 
slightly inwards and over, slightly inwards and over. So I end up getting this kind of scalloped effect, very, very slightly though. It just makes it look a little bit more organic and a little bit more realistic. So a slight curve out and over, slightly out and over, slightly out and over, slightly out and over. And you'll see here I am just drawing over where I put those tie marks because realistically with the pens that I've chosen to use, it'll still look like those tie offs are over the top of my binding. To finish the binding though, you do have to go and draw in the other edge. For that one, I just drew a slight curve from one point to the other. Not too shabby. And then we just continue that the full way around. Once you've waited an appropriate amount of time to let your ink dry, then it's time to go and get rid of all of our pencil marks. I need to emphasize that again. Wait until your ink is dry before you go in with an eraser. This probably took a little while and you don't want to ruin it by smudging all your ink. Now it's time to start thinking about the decoration you want to add to the outside of your dreamcatcher. So this is things like feathers, streamers, hanging beads, ribbons, that kind of stuff. For this one I'm going to have a similar thing to what I did for my monthly splash page and I'm going to have... For this one I'm going to have a similar thing to what I had for my monthly splash page and I'm going to have a word hanging down the bottom here and two feathers, one either side. Because I want my lettering to be equally spaced, I'm starting off by going in with pencil and sketching out where I want my letters to go. Each of my letters takes up two columns and three rows. And I've put it so that the central most letter is at the center of the bottom of my dream catcher. I've then drawn straight lines from the center of each letter up to my dream catcher, and these are gonna act as my hanging streamers or little pieces of string that tie those letters to the dream catcher. I also draw a line either side, and those are going to be where my hanging feathers are. To draw in my feathers, as you guys will have seen in my monthly setup, I like to cap these off with these small circles to kind of represent beads. So on each of these strings, I'm going to draw two small circles, a smaller one on top of a bigger one. And then hanging from those, I'm going to draw my feathers in. To draw in the spine or the center of each of my feathers, I'm then just going to draw a line that comes downward from each of those beads that's slightly curved, nothing too crazy, but is still an organic shape. And to make it so it looks more like the spine of a feather, I'm just going to thicken that slightly by drawing another line just beside it. So it starts off quite narrow, gets a little bit thicker, and then ends at a point. Then to actually sketch in the feather design, I'm just going to draw a curved line either side of my center that's a little bit thicker towards the middle top area and thin towards the bottom. Note that I am still doing all of this in pencil because if it doesn't look right, I want to be able to erase it and start again. Now as I have the general outline of my feathers, it's time to start adding in some detail. As you will have seen in the feathers of my cover page, for those I had these little cut-ins to kind of make them look like they weren't necessarily straight off the duck's back. <laughs> these feathers had seen a few things. Not too many things, just a few things. So putting these little cuts or intersections every so often along my feathers is what I'm going to want to do. Those little intersections should really just look like triangles. Very slight triangles. And at the top of each of the feathers you can add a little bit of fluff or decoration. And 
and once you're happy with it, it's time to commit with pin. So that your feathers don't look too smooth or too much like leaves, do make sure to go and add some rougher patches or a little bit of imperfection, just so that they do look like feathers and not like leaves. In terms of drawing the ribbons that I want these in terms of drawing the ribbons that I want these feathers to be hanging from, the easiest way I've found to do that is just drawing one organic line from one set of beads and then another organic line going the other side. And then the same again to connect these beads to my dream catcher. In terms of my lettering, as you guys saw, I just went over some sections double with my Tombow to give it that ombre effect, and then I did an outline with the Pit Artist Pen. In terms of the little tie-off points, I did those three little lines just like we did for our Dreamcatcher, but then also added two little loops at the top to make it look like they've been tied off. What you can also do if you want to is add three little lines anywhere that these points met the Dreamcatcher, just so that they look like they've been tied there as well. I'm just going to leave it because I think mine looks fine, but it is something you can do. Now it's time to add some colour to my feathers, but before we do that we need to erase any pencil lines we might have left behind. For the beads and the ribbons, I'm just going to colour those in straight with a Tombow, but for my feathers I want a slightly more pastel ombre effect, so I'm going to be using my N00 Tombow to help out with that. For the feathers I'm going to be using this pink pen, my stamping block, and as I said the N00 Tombow. If you don't have a stamping block you can just use something like a piece of paper with some sticky tape laid down over it. You could also use a snap lock bag. Essentially anything that you can take your coloured Tombow and scribble onto it where the Tombow isn't going to bleed into it. Does that kind of make sense? This acrylic block is waterproof, it's not going to absorb any of the colour from the Tombow, which means that I can scribble it onto the block and then use my N00 to pick up the colour and put it down on my feathers. So just like I said, picking up the colour and then putting it down onto my feathers. Do make sure that once you're done you scribble off any remaining ink from the N00, otherwise it will stain your pen. Then to finish off this page I'm just going to go and add some beads at the top here so it looks like the dream hatcher is actually hanging from something. What I'm now going to do is add in a few little things to finish off my page and then we're going to talk a little bit more about how you can modify this dream catcher to suit your needs. Earlier in this video I mentioned that you do not have to draw out a bunch of concentric circles to actually draw a dream catcher, and there are other ways that you can do it. 
I thought I'd show you guys quickly how that could happen. For this one, I'm not gonna be taking quite as much time or as care with it, so it might end up looking a little bit more messy, but if you take the same amount of care, it will look just as good. The start is the same though, we have to start by finding the center of our circle and marking that off. And you do at the very least want to start with the outside circle. For this, anything circular would work, so a cup or maybe a small bowl. I'm going to use my map mat, so just placing that in the center and then drawing in the circle. Now, for this one, I'm assuming that the reason that you're not drawing a bunch of concentric circles is because you either don't have a helix or you don't have a circle stencil. What my next step here would be, would be to freehand another circle just inside of this one. That's going to be the border of your Dreamcatcher overall. So if I wanted about yay big. So between this point that goes all the way around and my outer circle, that's going to be the outermost ring of my Dreamcatcher. So I just want to quite carefully go around and try to keep that gap relatively consistent. Sketch out another circle inside of the first one. So you can see it's not perfect, but really that's okay. When you come to draw in the wrap sections, you're not going to be using a straight edge anyways. Remember they end up being that slightly scalloped shape, so it's alright if the circles aren't perfect. Now what I'm going to do, instead of drawing a bunch of concentric circles, is just go in and draw in the guidelines. Again, you can choose to cut each of these eight segments into two or into three, I'm just going to cut them into two this time. For this part you can use a protractor to make sure these are a little bit more even, but for this I'm just going to eyeball it. At this point what we then want to do is go and add in those dots on every second intersection. So this one, this one, this one. For our second ring of dots, on this one we don't have any circle guidelines. If you had something that was still circular shaped but smaller, you could put that on top and trace around it. Or what you can do is use length. Making sure that you're working along each of the guidelines with a consistent length means that those dots will end up in the right places. So if we get out a ruler, let's just say that I want my next ring of dots to be one centimeter in from the edge. So I'll get my ruler, measure in one centimeter, and put my dot. Skipping this one onto the next one, one centimeter, putting my dot. Skip, next, one centimeter, put in my dot. This means you'll still end up with consistency, but you won't have to have those concentric circles for guidelines. Onto the next one, we just need a bigger measurement. So for this one, we used one centimeter. Maybe for the next one, we want to use 1.5 centimeters. And then for the next one, we might want to use two and a half centimeters. This is why we do it in pencil first. And on the next one, I'm going to do three centimeters. When it comes to connecting those dots, we're just going to do the same thing that we did last time. So starting on an outermost and going to the two either side. And then going to the next one in. And to the next one in. And the next. And if you have more dots, on to the next. So you can see we still end up with the same effect, but we didn't have to draw any of those concentric circles. Now before I go and draw in the lines for this, I wanted to show you what it might look like if you wanted to draw beads on your Dreamcatcher. So when beads are interwoven with a Dreamcatcher pattern, they're usually done on a line or between two intersections rather than as part of the intersection itself. So in terms of drawing beads on my dream catches, what I would do would just be to draw a circle 
that goes on a line. So you can see the line cuts through the circle. When I draw the line in, I won't actually cut it through the circle, but it gives me a guideline for where I can put them. Also, it's probably good to remember that gravity is a thing, so your beads will probably hang towards the bottom of your dream catches. So for instance, if you're drawing it along this line here, you'll probably draw it along the bottom of the line rather than at the top. And then going in and drawing all those lines. And then for the outer edge, just like we did last time, so drawing off those ties. And then going around with that slightly curved shape that goes out slightly and then over, out slightly and then over, out slightly and then over, all the way around. And again, once you've waited the appropriate amount of time, then you can erase your lines. <laughs> For decoration, as I mentioned before, there are a couple of things you can do. The main two that I use are the feathers and the streamers. So having a look at those ones. In terms of feathers, you can have them come directly off your dream catcher, or you could have them hanging by some kind of ribbon and then draw them in. And in terms of the style of those feathers, there's plenty of different options. My personal favourites are the ones that are a little bit more full and look a little bit more fluffy, or the ones that we did on the last Dreamcatcher that have those little cut-ins. So here I have the ones with those cut-ins, and this one's a little bit more full, a little bit more fluffy. In terms of the ribbons, we have those simple ones we did before, which is just one organic line and then another line up the side of it. Or you can get a little bit more decorative with these and draw one organic line. And then draw a line that kind of crisscrosses over that from side to side. This kind of makes it look like you have a twisted ribbon and adds a little bit more visual interest. And as you guys will have seen in my monthly setup, I also had some beaded ribbons, so this is just a combination of drawing those little circles as beads, and also these kind of twisted ribbon styles. Well there we go team, hopefully that cleared up some questions, hopefully you guys have a better understanding of how to draw dream catches now. If you did have any questions though, please do leave them in the comments below. I want to make sure that you guys can go and draw your own dream catches. They are relatively straightforward and they are really pretty when they're done. Also, if you guys want tutorials on anything else you've seen me draw before, please do let me know about those as well. I like making videos you guys actually want to see. Thank you for watching team, if you liked today's video please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up and if you wanted to see more from me, feel free to go check out one of my other videos. Until next time, bye!